hi guys welcome back to my channel hey if this is your first time seeing this lovely face my name is Naku Alute and you're most welcome to my channel however I would really do love for you to stay so kindly hit the subscribe button below to join my amazing YouTube family and to my returning viewers and subscribers thank you so much for coming back so as you can see from the title of today's video I'm going to be spilling the tea on everything relating to traveling to Zanzibar so if this sounds like something you are interested in then stick and stay till the end of this video and don't forget to smash the subscribe button if you are not yet subscribed So as some of you may already know, I traveled to Zanzibar um, last year, um, June 2021 with my husband for our birthdays. Um, it was such a lovely trip, like Zanzibar is such an amazing place. I really loved it over there. Um, if you've not seen that video yet, I would link it somewhere here and you can go check that video out after you finish watching this one. So yeah. I, I really loved my time at Zanzibar and ever since we got back from Zanzibar I've been getting like you know a whole lot of questions like constantly I get questions relating to you know traveling to Zanzibar um, accommodation flights activities and all of that so yeah in today's video I'll be sharing with you everything you need to know about you know traveling to Zanzibar from Ghana specifically and I also put it up on my community tab and also on my Instagram um, story for you guys to ask me like anything you want to know about traveling to Zanzibar and I got a few questions so I would you know answer all of those questions here as well but before we get into today's video i just want you guys to know i have created a second youtube channel where i would be sharing just study abroad content so that channel is called study abroad with naku alote and i know majority of you are subscribed to my channel because of study abroad content and i don't want to you know mix it with my vlogs and lifestyle content so i have created a channel specifically for that where i would be sharing like valuable information relating to study abroad so if you are on here and you're subscribed to this channel because of study abroad then head on there to subscribe for more study abroad content um, I'll put the name here I would also leave the link in the description box you might not find the name when like you put in the search in the search bar because it's quite a new channel I've not really uploaded any video yet so it might be way easier for you to just click on the link and then subscribe also for those of you who are here not really because of my study abroad content and because of my lifestyle and vlogs and all of that i really do appreciate it if you go support me on that channel as well like you subscribing to that channel will mean a lot to me so i would really appreciate your support even if you're not really interested in the study abroad content i would really do love for you guys to support me on that channel as well so yeah just click on the link in my description box and go subscribe to my second channel which is study abroad with naku alute now let's get down to business okay so zanzibar is in tanzania which is in africa um specifically east africa and um, someone actually asked um this is the first thing i want to talk about and somebody actually asked about it um can you talk about the visa process and how long visa approval took okay so for Ghanaian passport holders you don't need a visa to visit tanzania so you don't need a visa to visit zanzibar which is amazing because like really it's such a beautiful country in africa and to know that you don't need a visa to to visit there is quite amazing so for Ghanaian passport holders you don't need a visa to to visit um zanzibar um however if you are from another country i would recommend that you find out if you would need a visa to visit um tanzania or zanzibar i believe like most other african countries do not need like um, a visa to visit zanzibar i would however recommend that you do your own research to find out if you need um, a visa to visit zanzibar or not but for Ghanaian passport holders i can confidently say that you do not need a visa to visit zanzibar so now that visa is out of the way we move on to flight or airfare 
and for flights there's quite a number of options available if you're flying from Accra to Zanzibar however I've not come across like a direct flight from Accra to Zanzibar um, all of the ones I have come across are like you have to transit and the least is like one stop some of them are like two stops so we have um, Kenya Airways Ethiopian Airlines Emirates Qatar they all you know do flights from Accra to Zanzibar and for the cost of the flight depending on the time you book your flight we all know that mostly when you book your flights like way ahead of your intended travel date you are likely to get you know cheaper fares so depending on the time you book your flight averagely the flight cost for um, a flight from Accra to Zanzibar ranges between $700 to like um, $900, $950 it can however go as high as a um, thousand or over a thousand dollars especially during November and December time so yeah that's like the average flight cost from Accra to Zanzibar and most of these airlines like I said some of them have one stop some of them have two stops so for Ethiopian Airlines like this the one that has one stop you transit through Addis which is Addis Ababa in Ethiopia and then you continue to Zanzibar the ones that have two stops you transit through Addis and then you go through Dar es Salaam and then you continue to Zanzibar. Some people also go with the ferry option from Dar es Salaam to Zanzibar. So you can fly from Accra and transit through either Kenya, Ethiopia, Dubai, Doha depending on the airline you are using and then finally to Dar es Salaam and continue from Dar es Salaam to Zanzibar on a ferry. I know a friend who actually used a ferry from um, Dar es Salaam to, to Zanzibar. So yeah, that's also another option. So it's either you go on a flight from Accra to Zanzibar on a flight that has either one stop or two stops or you go on a flight from Accra to Dar es Salaam and continue by ferry to Zanzibar. However, during my travel, I actually went to Kenya first. So um, I traveled to Kenya. I spent a couple of days in Kenya before we finally moved to Zanzibar. And from Kenya to Zanzibar, it was a direct flight. Um, I've forgotten the name of the airline. However, it was operated by Kenya Airways. So it was a direct flight from Kenya to Zanzibar. So yeah, the, the direct flight from Kenya to Zanzibar or from Kenya to Tanzania actually stops in Zanzibar first and then continues to Dar es Salaam. So yeah, for me, it was a direct flight from Kenya to Zanzibar. And so yeah, that's also another option if you are planning a trip to Zanzibar. You can actually spend some days in Kenya because Kenya is also visa free for um, Ghanaian passport holders. So you, you can, you know, do two countries in like, you know, one trip. So you, you move from Accra to Kenya and then spend a couple of days in Kenya and then move from Kenya to um, Zanzibar. Yeah. And also when it comes to COVID requirements or COVID restrictions, you need a negative um, COVID-19 test result to enter Zanzibar. Even if you are fully vaccinated or not, you need um, a negative COVID-19 test result to enter Zanzibar. And you also need to fill out the traveler's um, civilian's form. And you also need another um, negative COVID-19 test result before you depart from Zanzibar. So yeah, these are the COVID-19 um, requirements or restrictions in Zanzibar. So if you are going to go um, by flight from Accra to Zanzibar, now when you get to Zanzibar, how to move from the airport to your hotel or to your accommodation? So there are two options. Either you arrange with a hotel for um, airport pickup or you can you know just get a taxi at the airport and averagely the taxi fare from the airport to like whichever location you are staying in within Zanzibar ranges from like $35 to like 70 ish or 80 ish like yeah let's say $35 to like $80 so averagely you should be paying something within that range depending on which part of the island you'll be staying so either stone town um, kendwa nungui paje jambiani whichever place you'll be staying um 
for us we actually arranged for airport pickup however they didn't show up so we had to go like get a taxi from the airport to our hotel which was in Nungui so from the airport to Nungui we actually paid um, $50 and uh, Nungui is like on the extreme end of the island so yeah from the airport to Nungui we paid $50 so yeah these are the transportation options available um, from the airport to whichever part of the island you would be staying okay guys so now let's move on to accommodation um look at me just going on with a video forgetting about you know the questions so this is what i'm going to do i would um answer the questions after the video hopefully i would have answered like majority of them uh by the time i finish talking so yeah uh, moving on to accommodation um the truth is i didn't really um search on like do an intensive search on accommodation um i found a few that i liked and like i saved them so when it was getting closer to my travel date i sort of had to narrow them down to whichever one i wanted to stay in however i stayed in two like hotels however there are quite a number of options available in zanzibar and i feel no matter your budget you would definitely get somewhere to stay because you can get places for us low as um, $45 a night and you can get places for as, as high as $300 a night so I feel like no matter what your budget is you will definitely get somewhere to stay so in terms of accommodation you can just go on bookings.com and put in like your destination which is Zanzibar or if you have a particular place in Zanzibar that you want to stay you put in there say Nungui, Kendwa, jambiani whatever like whichever area or whichever part of zanzibar you want to stay you put it there and then you put in your travel date and then you have like a whole lot of options available to you and you can decide on where you want to stay depending on your budget however um like i was saying we stayed at two different places the first place we stayed at was um double tree by hilton in nungui it's such an amazing place it's such a lovely place but it's a bit on the high side like in terms of price like price wise but it's such an amazing place you have like a beach everything ocean view like it's heavenly um so yeah for double tree by hilton nungui um for i think we were in the superior room i really don't remember and we actually had you know the ocean view and we also had a bit of the pool view we also had a bit of you know the garden view it was amazing and for double tree by hilton um it was 250 dollars a night however we opted for the half board option so that made it go up to like i think 280 or 290 dollars so with the half board option you have um, breakfast and dinner included in your your offer so yeah we opted for the half board option and not for the full board option because obviously we knew that we we're not going to be in the hotel like in the afternoons because we had like activities planned so there was no point going for the full board option which had breakfast um lunch and dinner so we opted for the half board option which excludes lunch because we were not going to be in the hotel in the afternoon so yeah and Nungui is such you know a lovely place to stay amazing beaches lovely ocean blue waters and actually most of the activities that I wanted to do were like close by Nungui so it was such a perfect location for me and like yeah I, I really enjoyed my time at Double Tree by Hilton the whole swing over there and all of that and yeah Kendwa is like not so far from Nungui, Kendwa Rocks, all of that. Like it's such an amazing location and I believe there are other, you know, relatively cheaper um, hotel options available in the Nungui area. And for our last two nights, we stayed in Sea Cliff Resort and Spa in Mangapwani which is you know a bit closer to the airport as compared to Nungui so we decided to move from Double Tree by Hilton in Nungui to Sea Cliff Resort and Spa in Mangapwani because Nungui is like on the extreme end of the island so we wanted to move to somewhere which is a bit closer to the airport it's not like Mangapwani is like literally close to the airport but it was way better as compared to being in Nungui so yeah we moved to Sea Cliff Resort and Spa which is paradise on earth like i really loved the place the views are amazing and it's just a lovely place to be fair um so yeah we moved to sea cliff resort and spa 
and for sea cliff i think we paid around the same price as um what's it called double tree by hilton i think we paid like 260 or 280 dollars for a half board as well and one amazing thing about sea cliff is you have access to um, other complimentary activities once you lodge there so um, i was able to do um, kayaking and catamaran without paying anything because it was complimentary because i was staying at sea cliff and you also we also had like you know a bicycle ride around the the facility it was it was like and it's quite a huge place it's quite a huge place i really loved my time at sea cliff the views a hundred so yeah um sea cliff is amazing also another place that i found that i was you know tempted to stay at because i loved the whole you know vibe of the place was um oprah hotel the only thing that held me back was the fact that you didn't have you know easy access to the ocean as compared to double tree and sea cliff though you could like you know literally walk out of the the walls of the hotel and walk like to the beach side we didn't have like you know easy access to the ocean as compared to double tree and sea cliff but it's such a lovely place and i think it's quite affordable as well so yeah that's also another place you can you know have a look at if you're looking for an affordable place to stay in zanzibar um there's this particular place that i really wanted to stay so bad um it's called beladin right yeah beladin zanzibar um i'll look for like something of the years and put on the screen they are on instagram as well but i really liked the whole you know ambience of the place and all of that like the aesthetics it was just my kind of vibe but um unfortunately they were fully booked and it's like a family owned like hotel or a family owned um, resource so they don't really have like a booking site and all of that it was quite hard but it's such a lovely place it was fully booked um, so yeah i couldn't stay there maybe when i visit zanzibar again i would definitely stay there because it's, it's such a lovely place like from the pictures i've i actually went to the extent of looking for like vlogs of people who had actually stayed there before and it's such an amazing place okay so now moving on to how to um get around the island like how to move from your hotel to like another part of the island or how to move from your hotel to the venue of whichever activity you have planned for the day so for us we use a taxi and it costs 50 dollars per day and you also need to you know buy um, gas or fuel for the car but then that is as and when the the gas runs low so yeah averagely if you rent like a taxi for your entire stay you'd be paying like 50 to 60 dollars per day and you also need to buy gas or fuel for the car and trust me fuel prices in zanzibar are not outrageous as our fuel prices here in ghana so yeah it's nothing too expensive and yeah so yeah we moved around in a taxi which is like a van that's how that's how their taxis are i think it can take up to like six people if i'm not mistaken i need to go through my videos to be sure but it can take like let's say four or five people so if you are a group of friends and you're on a trip together like it's perfect because at the end of the day you are just sharing you know 50 or 60 dollars amongst a group of four or five people to you know pay for transportation like within the island which is amazing like I, I think that is fairly okay so yeah if you are planning on visiting Zanzibar then you can think of that as well like you know traveling in a group like a group of friends which would you know bring down your cost and also when it comes to accommodation the same because some of some of the places like Baladin like this I noticed that they are actually I don't know how to say it's like villas or bungalows. So, so some of them have like two bedrooms or two beds some of them have three so if you are a group of friends then obviously you can share the cost and then pay amongst yourself and also another accommodation option available in zanzibar is definitely um villas so you can get like a whole villa to yourself or a whole villa to um, a group of friends and you can share and pay so yeah that's also another um accommodation option available so yeah that's how much we paid per day for you know transportation um within the island and our driver was such a nice person he turned into our tour guide for the entire trip he was recommended to us by a friend so yeah he came to us 
as soon as we arrived in Zanzibar like he came to our hotel and then we planned out like everything we wanted to do and that was how it all started and he was he was just perfect like we had a good time with him to be fair okay so now moving on to activities um, they are actually a lot of activities to do in Zanzibar like a whole lot of them but I'm going to be talking about the ones that I did and then give you like a fair idea of how much you know they cost or how much I paid so I visited the Nungui Teto Aquarium um, I really don't know how to pronounce this Namrani or Mamrani I don't know but it's a Nungui it's a Teto Aquarium in Nungui which was not too far from our hotel um, the first one which is um, Double Tree by Hilton it's not too far from there so that was why i went to do the whole you know swimming with the turtles and all of that but at this place you can't swim with the turtles there's this other um um aquarium which is the baraka or barack or something aquarium and with that with that other place you can swim with the turtles so yeah I remember when we got to the Nungui Aquarium, I was like, no, this is not the place. Because from the pictures I had seen, like, you can actually enter the water to swim with the turtles. But the way the Nungui Aquarium was looking, it didn't look like I can do that. So I was like, no, this is not the place. This is not the place. However, yeah, so if you want to have that experience, because I'm definitely going to go back to Zanzibar and go to Baraka or Barak um, Aquarium to, to enter the water to swim with the turtles. So, yeah. For um, the Nungui Aquarium, we paid um, ten dollars, so it's ten dollars per head for the Nungui Aquarium. So the next activity I did was swimming with a horse in the ocean, and that cost um, fifty dollars. And for that, we had to do it through Zanzibar Horse Club. So yeah, swimming with a horse in the ocean for like thirty minutes, and that was fifty dollars. I think they also have the option where you don't really enter the ocean; you just, you know ride on the horse um, along the shores of the ocean or um, within the town and that is like 40 dollars i think i'm going to leave a link to their website in the description box below and you can just you know check out their prices and offers available but this was like the highlight of my zanzibar trip it was such an amazing experience like i would love to do this over and over again <laughs> though i was a bit scared but then like as i i did it for a couple of minutes i was okay and yeah you're going to be guided as well so nothing to worry about there'll be a guide like in the water with you um taking care of the horse making sure that the horse doesn't misbehave so yeah it was such a lovely experience and oh one thing they don't open on sundays because um i think we got to zanzibar on a saturday and then the next day was a sunday and that was when i wanted to do it and we got to the place and they said they don't work on sundays so yeah bear in mind they don't work on sundays so if you want to do it it has to be from monday to saturday and i think they also consider the the tides before they you know go ahead to book you so yeah that's it swimming with a horse in the ocean like this is one thing that i would want all of you to experience it was such an amazing experience and so yeah if you are planning on visiting um zanzibar then you should definitely put this on your bucket list like you need to have this done i want you guys to experience it as well because i really loved it uh, so yeah the next thing i did was uh, a visit to prison island so yeah when you are going to prison island it's obviously on an island so you need to take like a water taxi a boat or whatever from from like stone town area i don't even know what that area is but you need to take yeah i think that was like around stone town so you take a water taxi from there to to the island which is prison island and we paid like 20 dollars for that it was just me my husband and um the driver mohammed and fortunately for us mohammed made sure to you know bargain properly on everything for us and that's one tip for you guys like when you're traveling to zanzibar or when you travel to zanzibar let your driver be your friend <laughs> like because he is obviously a local and he knows like how much these things are supposed to cost you guys know that sometimes when you go to a place and then they notice that you are not from there or you're a foreigner they try to you know outsmart you so with us mohammed like did almost all the bargaining for us like yeah they would see the initial price we would hear it but i would be like nah man this is too much and he would like literally slash its way down so yeah for our water taxi to or for our boat to um prison island we paid 
20 dollars and i think when we got to um prison island we paid um either five dollars or ten dollars um to you know have access to the place so at prison island there are also like you know tortoises and like very old tortoises very huge ones and you get to feed them and they they actually have their ages you know written on their shells so you have some which are as old as you know a hundred years you have some which are as old as you know over a hundred years so yeah that's literally it's about prison island and then you have like there's this other part of it that has this you know nice view and that was when they used to do the whole you know slave trade and all of that but yeah it's quite a nice place to visit so yeah you can check that out as well if you happen to be in Zanzibar and then the next activity is swimming with dolphin and I'm going to add snorkeling to this because I did both on the same day so with swimming with dolphins you actually have to wake up very early and so we had to go on a boat again on a water taxi towards like member islands because that's where like the snorkeling takes place so yeah um it was just me my husband and then uh, mohammed again and because it was like two two activities in one we paid um 45 dollars for the water taxi to member island but then before we actually got to member island to do the snorkeling we had to look for the dolphins to swim with which i actually didn't swim with dolphins i ended up watching the dolphins swim or watching people swim with dolphins but it was such a lovely experience and like i was saying with the swimming with dolphins you have to like you know wake up very early because apparently the dolphins they show up early in the morning and it was quite scary because we kept going 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 and we we're not finding any dolphins like we literally had to go to like the deep part of the ocean to look for dolphins like i got scared at some point because guys it was it was getting scary and to make it worse it began to rain like the clouds were dark and it started to rain like i was scared because we were like in the middle of nowhere but yeah it was it was such a lovely experience though but i was scared and uh, so yeah that's it swimming with the dolphins and then from there we moved on to member island where the snorkeling takes place and bear in mind we hear member island member island member island when you get to the place you're actually not getting down onto the island because the island is a private property i don't remember if that is bill gates um, island or it's another one but i know bill gates island is around there. i don't know if that's like the member island but yeah it's a private island but you don't really get onto the island so they sort of dock like close to the island and then like the snorkeling takes place just around the island and that's it so yeah for that we paid 45 dollars for everything that's like swimming with the dolphins and snorkeling uh, so yeah these are the activities that i did um, the other ones that i did were complementary activities um, from the hotel which is um, sea cliff resort and spa so i did kayaking and i did catamaran trust me i had never heard of catamaran before and it was it was quite new to me but i enjoyed it so yeah i did kayaking um catamaran and they also have you know bicycles where you just ride around the property like it was nice like i did it with hubby and it was it was good so yeah um these are the activities that i did whilst i was in zanzibar and we also went to yeah i forgot we went to kendwa um kendwa rocks because kendwa is not you know far from from nungui so yeah we just went to kendwa to you know chill at the beach um relax we had some cocktails and you know we had something to eat hubby had you know like a group of people to play volleyball with and then that was where i saw those people what are they called the people who jump yeah i saw them on the beach like those tall people like we saw them on the on the kendra rocks beach and we took a we took pictures with them and took pictures of them and videoed them and all of that okay so i hope i've given you all the information you need to know about you know traveling to zanzibar or like you know planning a trip to zanzibar um, in terms of activities you can always search for because i believe like at every location or every destination new activities keep coming up like day by day so yeah i hope i've given you guys enough information i hope i've given you guys valuable information that would help you plan 
your trip to Zanzibar so yeah I'm just going to go through um, the questions now to see if there's anyone I haven't really answered then I'll do that um, this one says how much should one budget for when traveling to Zanzibar in terms of all the expenses well I really can't tell because it depends on what you want to do it depends on your personal budget like how much you are willing to spend and all of that however you should always use the flight cost as your starting point so know that the flight cost is from let's say 700 dollars to like 900 or 950 dollars and based on that you can add on so let's say you are willing to spend 50 dollars um, per night on accommodation then you know maybe you are staying there for five nights then you add that on and um activities that that also depends on what you want to do because there are a lot of activities so depending on the type of activities you want to do you keep adding on and then you'll be able to come up with you know a rough budget on how much you you are likely to spend on a trip to zanzibar however don't forget in this time whenever you are planning a trip you need to consider you know um covid cost because you need to take a covid test yeah from here before you get to zanzibar when you are leaving zanzibar to back to ghana you need to take a covid test in zanzibar before you leave when you get to ghana you are supposed to take another covid test so you need to incorporate all of that in your budget or your expenses um, the next question says what is the price range for their budget friendly hotels i think i've already answered this um, you can get hotels for as low as 40 dollars um, you can get some for as high as 300 dollars per night but yeah they have quite a number of you know budget friendly hotels you can just go on bookings.com and put in you know the destination which is zanzibar and put in your proposed travel dates and it will give you you know a list of hotels available with their respective rates and you move from there is it better or lesser when you plan and travel by yourself or is it lesser when you go with a traveling agency and which would you recommend well yeah this actually depends on you know personal preferences like if you're a type of person who doesn't mind you know traveling with a group of people that you don't know or i don't know it, it depends on personal preferences but sometimes these travel agencies are able to you know get discounts when it comes to airfares accommodation activities and all of that because obviously they are going with um, a group of people so they are able to get discounts of what you would have gotten if you were going by yourself or doing everything by yourself so yeah in most cases it's relatively cheaper if you're going with you know a travel agency that has like you know a, a group trip or like a whole package together it beats down the cost okay so this one says what do you think should be the overall budget for two weeks for two people yeah i believe if you put like you know bits and pieces of everything that i've spoken about like cost wise you should be able to come up with an ideal budget or a rough budget for two weeks for two people because like i said it depends on a whole lot of factors where you'd want to stay like what kind of accommodation you're looking at is it like a four-star hotel is it like a five-star hotel is it like a two-star hotel is it a villa like all of those things count and then also what activities you want to do so yeah if you put bits and pieces of like everything i've spoken about in terms of cost you should be able to come up with an ideal budget for two people for two weeks and the person goes on to ask how was the food there sincerely i'm not the type of person to experiment with food like i'm not the type of person to try out you know new dishes and all of that like new meals like i've gone to another country and i want to try their local dishes nah i try to play it safe like i don't know when it comes to food i'm not so adventurous so um i didn't really try any local <laughs> i didn't really try like anything like very local to like tanzanians or yeah it was just the usual breakfast i kept it safe dinner i kept it safe so i can't really say much about their local food however 
um, almost all the meals I had were at the hotels that I stayed in like breakfast dinner because mostly during our activities when we we're on the move I had a lot of snacks so I was snacking most of the time like when we are moving from one place to another like I'll just you know have some snacks in the in the car before we get to the place or even when we get to the place so most of the meals that I actually had were at the hotels and I actually loved the food like it was just you know a regular rice and all of that chicken just playing the safe so yeah that's it when it comes to food unfortunately I didn't really try any of their local stuff how can one with low budget travel to Zanzibar I heard it's pretty expensive when it comes to traveling the African continent that's so true it's actually very expensive when traveling the African continent because like traveling within Europe is not you know that expensive but traveling within Africa is like too expensive but you can try and make it you know a bit inexpensive by planning well and also you know like booking your flights way ahead of your proposed travel date that way you get like cheaper fares and all of that and a few other things like when it comes to I think she even asked this over here apart from hotels which other places can one secure accommodation while away so yeah apart from hotels you can look for other cheaper accommodation options um, like Airbnb because Airbnbs are actually you know way cheaper than hotels so yeah that's also another way you can try and you know cut down cost and this person goes on to ask which travel agencies can one contact for better and affordable office well unfortunately i don't really have enough information about this because for most of my travels i do like everything by myself we book our tickets by ourselves we book our accommodation everything by ourselves literally um but i think waka now actually has you know fairly good offers or fairly good rates so you can check out waka now yeah this one says what did you like and dislike about the place well what did i like about the place i absolutely loved everything about so i about to be fair like i'm going to be a bit biased here because Zanzibar had been on my list for like only God knows how long so being able to visit Zanzibar was like <laughs> Like I just loved everything about the place blue waters um, White sand Clear beaches clean beaches like what is there to hate about Zanzibar? <laughs> Maybe the only thing I didn't like was the fact that yeah, the only thing I didn't like was the fact that they had like a lot of cats around the place like trust me i bought um double tree by hilton and nungui and then um sea cliff like both hotels that i stayed in like when you're having breakfast or when you're having dinner then the cats are under the table you know the way cats are like clingy and i don't like cats I dislike cats in my life like I love dogs but I don't like cats so that's one thing I didn't like like cats everywhere and you see the cats oh god the way cats are clingy like and they would be just oh that's the only thing I didn't like about Zanzibar to be fair aside that I loved everything about Zanzibar okay so I finished answering the questions um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope I answered everything you you want to know about you know traveling to Zanzibar or everything you want to know relating to Zanzibar and if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you have you know any other questions you can drop them in the comment section below and I'll answer them for you and don't forget to you know smash that subscribe button if you are not yet subscribed yet and one more thing don't forget to subscribe to my second YouTube channel which is study abroad with naku alute i'm going to leave the link in the description box like i said earlier on and i'm gonna see you guys in my next video